Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Hedera Hashgraph. So HBAR is the native token of Hedera Hashgraph, and it was one of the better performers coming out of the election. In fact, of the more major altcoins out there, it was the best, almost an 850% move off of that event, and a very impressive move. And what's also, I think, notable about HBAR is how it's behaved since. Now, some people might be disappointed in this, say, why didn't it just continue going up, up, up forever? Why is it going sideways? But in fact, when you look at what HBAR has managed to do over this time compared to other similar projects, so basically other layer one protocols, it's actually held up better. So that's what I wanna show with this chart here. The blue line here is HBAR. Then we also have Algorand, we have AVAX, and we have ADA, just some other alternative layer one protocols out there. Now, I didn't include Solana here just because that has some idiosyncratic, unique things going on with it, such as, for example, Trump coin launching there that makes it a little bit hard to compare it. These are just ones that have been ongoing competitors, but don't have some crazy external catalyst like that to affect their price action. And you'll see that HBAR has been holding up better. In fact, HBAR actually put in a new local high relative to back here, whereas these other protocols have not done so after their runs out of the election. So that suggests that there's some relative strength here with HBAR. And in these kind of corrections or consolidations in the broader market, it can be useful to pay attention to what are the assets that are showing relative strength. And that doesn't mean that they're necessarily ripping to the upside, but they're holding up better than other ones. What that might suggest is that there might be a decent number of people who missed this first pump, just totally offsides, weren't a part of it at all. But they remember it. One of the best forms of marketing in a bull market is price action. Did you pump a lot? And if you did, people will remember that. So the people who missed the first leg up here for HBAR might be saying, all right, now is my chance. We've had cooling off, correction, consolidation. Now is my chance to accumulate to not miss the next leg up when that happens. And so that means that there can be a lot of demand coming in here that prevents the price of the asset from falling as much as some of the other assets are seeing. Basically in the face of weakness, we're actually seeing it hold up pretty well. And that might suggest that people are taking this as an opportunity to buy in, that all the selling pressure, all the people taking profit after maybe ones who made a lot of profit after this leg here, they're now actually selling into quite a bit of demand. And so far it's been relative parity. Now, the other thing that we can look at also with HBAR's price is just where are we relative to history? And you'll notice we're right up around the local highs from the spring of 2021. And then we were a bit above that, you know, in the all time high here in late 2021, but still in the upper range here in 2021. And so there might still be some people who are holding HBAR bags from up in this general area from last cycle who are also taking this as an opportunity to sell. So right now, the sellers are probably people who made profit more recently, shorter term holders, could also be people who have been holding for a long time, who are saying we're close enough to my cost basis or maybe even a bit above that, I'm now gonna sell out and be exited in my position without taking a loss. But the good news is that it seems like there's plenty of demand stepping in to keep price at a similar point, to offset that new sell pressure. So just looking at price action, we can already see some hopeful signs for HBAR that might suggest it's getting itself set up for another run. So what I want to also talk about, though, is some models that we have here at the channel and what they're seeing, because this can give an alternative, very useful perspective on HBAR and where it might be heading next. But first, if you want to see live data from our models and more, you can go to our website, polaritydigital.io, link in the description. And if you sign up for our Polarity Digital Pro plan, you get access to live data for all of our models for HBAR, Bitcoin, and a bunch of other different altcoins and more. So if you're interested, check it out. Link in the description. So this is our risk model, upside downside potential indicator. And this is the long-term version of the model. It cares about moves that play out over months to multiple months. And so you can see it does a great job of identifying these low risk periods where acquiring HBAR is quite lucrative. And also these points where selling HBAR has been a good idea. So you'll notice that we got to really low risk levels going into the election, basically acquiring HBAR down around four or five cents that general area, which of course played out very well given what happened after that. And in fact, all these other entries were at similar points back throughout the bottom 
of the bear market here then going into the bull market. Now, notably, this is a very explosive rally by h -Burn. You'll actually see the risk model got all the way up to the top of the scale and actually hung out there as weakness was showing up, suggesting that the upside potential was really tapped out at that point in time. The good news, though, is as we've gone sideways, and even as prices picked up a little bit here more recently, we're actually seeing long-term risks start to fall off quite dramatically. Not too dissimilar from what, for example, we saw through here. Now, that doesn't mean we have to see a big collapse like we did through here before the next leg up can happen, but it's just so showing that we're cooling off and that that can set the stage for that next leg up whenever that happens. Now, I still think that it's more likely that this bull market is going to be more condensed, that we're not necessarily going to just have this leg up and then this really long correction before the next leg up. I think it's very feasible and plausible in my mind that crypto will have at least one more leg up in this spring, which would suggest that this correction probably wouldn't last as long. And wouldn't surprise me also if we continue to see demand hold up, that even if we don't break out soon, we kind of still stay in a range. But even if that were to be the case, that we just stay in a range and we don't see this deep correction, you can still see this long-term risk cool off dramatically in that type of environment. And what I'd really like to see is HBAR consolidate for a bit longer, let long-term risk really get back down below neutral, ideally, maybe even back to levels that we saw, for example, back over here. And that can then set that stage, that new base for the next leg up. And the good news, if that were to happen, is that the upside potential relative to the downside potential would be very much biased in the upside's favor. You have a lot more upside to work with than remaining downside at that point. And you much rather rally from low risk levels then trying to rally from high risk levels. That doesn't really work out super well. If you're at the high risk point, it's unlikely for you to have especially meaningful upside after that. But if you're rallying out of really low risk levels, that's when you can get these really explosive moves to the upside. So basically good news, but I'd like to see this move further before H bar were to pump. So it's one of those things where patience, I think will be our friend and in some ways letting this play out a little bit longer, let risk cool off more will then maybe set the stage for a bigger move up down the line. I think we, if we rallied right now, our upside would be more limited than if we consolidated for a bit longer, let risk cool off more, and then rallied off of there. So not financial advice, you should make of these data as you will, but that's what I'm seeing when I look at risk as it comes to HBAR right now. So the other model I wanted to talk about was our momentum bias indicator or MBI. So that's this here. So positive values mean positive momentum bias. That just means that momentum is kind of biased to the upside, that it's really pulling price up and any corrections are quickly reversed. Any kind of falling off is quickly reversed back to the upside. Negative momentum bias is the opposite. That's when momentum is really prevailing to the downside and price really gets dragged down. And any attempts to reestablish positive momentum just gets sold off and you go down even further. So in bull markets, you spend a lot more time in the green than in the red and vice versa in bear markets, more time in the red than in the green. But then you have this kind of behavior, this oscillating around zero, which is really what happens in these accumulation phases coming out of bear markets into new bull markets. That's exactly what we saw HBAR do throughout here. And then off to the races we go. This seems to be that first basically starting gun of the bull market, this first big pump HBAR is putting in here. But we're still in the green. That's what I think is kind of remarkable, that despite all this correction and consolidation, momentum bias is still positive still very much looks like a bull market. So what I'd like to see is that even if this correction continues and the MDI continues to track down, what you want to look for is how does it interact with neutral, with zero here. Bull markets, when you get down into the red, they tend not to stay there for very long before you reverse back up into the green. That's what you'd want to look for here, that if we dipped into the red, you want to look and see, do we start seeing a reversal pretty soon after that happens? And especially not getting really deep into the red. If that were to happen, that's just totally normal bull market behavior. And that might be that sign as we then reverse to the upside that the next leg is upon us. And that we might have that next leg up that could ultimately take us to new all-time highs. So we're still early. We'll have to see how that happens. And I think in conjunction with what we're talking about with risk, it might take longer. We might actually need to wait until we do see that retest of zero on the MBI. But if we get that reversal, and especially if that happens when risk is way lower, that would be a great setup in my opinion. So to wrap up then, I think HBAR is doing exactly what you'd want it to do right now with this price action. 
I know some people just want things to go up forever. Markets don't work that way. I'm sorry, it's just not the way it works. And in fact, this consolidation was extremely expected given how high risk had gotten. But the good news is that it's holding up very well. New demand is stepping in to buy the dip, to buy the consolidation. We're seeing risk cool off. We're seeing momentum bias in a healthy spot, looking for potentially an important retest of the zero level. This is all what you'd want to see in a bull market, especially given the fact that HBAR seems to be showing relative strength relative to other assets that can suggest that it might actually be the focal point of another leg up, or at least maybe an early mover, and then other assets might follow after it. So obviously none of what I'm talking about here is financial advice. You should make of these data as you will and navigate the market as you see best fit. But I think this is a good continuation for HBAR. We saw this the big first leg up. We need consolidation to let the sellers exhaust themselves, set ourselves up for that next leg up. And I think the data still suggest that that is in the cards. I will obviously update my view if the data were to suddenly turn bearish, but I don't think that's the case right now. I think the base case to remain bullish still makes sense. All right, if you like the content, or to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over an excellent of updates about our models and more over there. You can go to our website, querydigital.io, to see live data from our models and more.